Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me this evening. My name is Kylie with Bake Eat Love and tonight I'm going to be showing you how to step-by-step -step make shoe pastry as well as we're going to talk about what exactly is shoe pastry and why is it important to learn how to make. All right, let's get started. So I have my um, pan here ready. I have eight tablespoons of butter that I'm going to go ahead and add to my pan as well as a cup of water. I'm going to turn my heat on medium high heat and what we're doing here is we are melting the butter and having it become cohesive with the water and bringing this mixture to a boil before we go on to the next step which is going to be adding in our flour. So we're just going to let that get started and while it does its thing we're going to talk about what exactly is shoe pastry. So shoe pastry is a twice cooked pastry or baked or fried, however you'd like to look at it. So the first part of the cooking process is going to be right here on the stove, which is what we are doing right now. When we add the flour in, we're going to be cooking out that raw flour, which is going to be that initial cook. And the second part of the process is after the shoe pastry is finished and it gets piped into um, whatever shape you're creating for whatever dessert it is, then it is either baked or it is fried. Um, and that is the second part of the cooking. So for frying, think churros or beignets. That would be an example of a uh, shoe pastry that would be fried. So what exactly is shoe pastry? It consists of very simple ingredients, as you can see. So we have our butter, we have water. You can also use milk, and sometimes some recipes use a combination of both. It also has flour, salt, Sometimes sugar, some people like to add that for a little extra um, browning or crispy factor on the outside, as well as eggs, which are going to be our leavening agent in this recipe. So we're using water this evening in our recipe, and the water is going to give this finished product a really nice crispy outer shell. Milk, on the other hand, gives it a little bit more of a tender, softer shell. So it kind of just depends on what your preference is um, when it comes to what you would like to use in your recipe. Some people find a combination, some people find water. I really enjoy water because I kind of like that crispy um, outer layer there. I find that to be really delicious. So who invented shoe pastry? Where did it come from? Like most recipes, there is some speculation, some back and forth on who exactly invented it. Um, but we can, for the most part, Take it all the way back to 1540, where it was the court of Catherine de Medici and her Italian pastry chef, uh, Chef Pantanelli, invented the shoe pastry. And from there, the recipe changed hands from chef to chef over time, French, Spanish, all throughout Europe. And there were different recipes created with this basic shoe pastry. He kind of started out where he was using it for more savory um, elements, adding some cheese in and other things like that. Um, whereas other chefs developed it into um, like a dessert product, like we know today, like a cream puff, an eclair, uh, beignets, profiteroles, which is a cream puff that's stuffed with ice cream, very delicious, and the churro um, that we all know and love um, that originated in Spain, which is piped like an eclair, but then fried, and it is tossed in uh, cinnamon and sugar, and then usually dipped in chocolate, which is... Delicious. What's not delicious dipped in chocolate? So there's just a couple of recipes um, that you can make with shoe pastry and that's why it's one of those recipes that is so great to know how to make because it's a good foundational pastry that you can turn into a lot of other different like delicious creations. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to zoom in here on our butter and water and I'm going to show you that it's starting to become cohesive, starting to simmer a little bit here. That is what we are looking for. So what you don't want to do is you don't want this mixture to simmer for too long and evaporate too much of the water because we want to make sure that we have our ratios correct. So it's doing exactly what I want it to do now. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to turn my heat off. I'm going to add in my flour and salt all at once. And then I'm going to stir this vigorously. You want to go ahead, you want to make sure that all of the flour lumps are getting taken out, that everything's getting mixed in. Give it a good stir so you can see how here you would, wouldn't want to use a 
pan or a pot that was lower, you wanna have these sides so that you're able to fling your product around and stir it, because if not, you're gonna be flopping it over the side, you're gonna lose your product, and that's not what we want. We want all of the deliciousness. So as you can see, it's starting to pull away from the sides, and you can start to see it coming together more. I have a little flour lump here, so I'm getting that in. Great. So this is a really important process. What we're doing is we're removing some of the moisture from the dough. So you might have to add this back on to the heat to turn your heat back on, I should say, um, to achieve this. However, I just have a little residual heat that I'm working with here, which is great. So I'm pouring this nice ball, and this is important because we want to make sure that we have enough moisture cooked out of it so that we don't have a flat like think eclair, if you pipe an eclair and then you bake it, you're gonna have a nice flat eclair or a soggy bottom, which is not what you want. What you want is a nice crisp and um, structure that's held up. So you want it to be just the perfect consistency before you move on to your next step. So I wanna show you here how it's forming a ball, how it's kind of starting to coat the bottom of my pan here if I smear it across. So our box this month is chocolate and raspberry eclairs. And we have a nice troubleshooting guide in there that, that talks about why it's so important to remove the moisture and kind of takes you through step by step on how you can fix little problems that pop up with eclairs, which is really great and something that you can keep with you for other recipes. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move over to my mixer now. I'm gonna add my dough in. Move around my paddle here. So, shoe pastry can be made by hand from start to finish. However, it's a labor of love to do it that way. So we like to use the, the mixer method here so that it kind of does the work for you. So I'm gonna turn it on medium low and you're gonna see some steam rising from this, which is great, this is what we want. We want the dough to start to cool down here so that when we do add our eggs in, we don't end up with scrambled eggs. So I'm gonna let that cool down. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna crack my first egg here. I like to crack my eggs into a separate bowl rather than adding them in directly with my product because that way you don't end up with shell in your final product, which nobody wants that. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add my first egg in. We're gonna be adding in our eggs one at a time. And I have here, I have five eggs just in case something were to happen to the one, but we're only gonna be using four eggs in this recipe tonight, maybe three. We'll look at, we'll test our dough and see what we think as we go along. But there are two reasons why we are adding in the eggs one at a time. And it'll become clear as we move along in the process. So what we wanna do is make sure that the egg is completely incorporated before we add in the next egg. So we'll zoom in and I'll show you what that looks like. So you can see there isn't any um, egg white, any of that albumin that is present and it's the dough is becoming more cohesive, looking a little less curled than when we added in that first egg. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add in our second egg. And I wanna point out that I am using large eggs. It's important that whenever you're following a recipe that you are using the egg that they recommend for you to use so that you're not intentionally adding in extra moisture into the recipe that's gonna result in a pastry that consistency that you weren't expecting. So this is our second egg. Again, you can see that it's not completely cohesive at first when you add it in, but I'm gonna speed it up just a little bit to kind of get everything mixed together. It starts to form together. It's gonna to have a nice sheen to it. It's gonna become more fluid. And this is what we are looking for. Great, so that is our second egg. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrape down the sides. See that nice sheen is already starting to develop, which is great. So we talked about adding the eggs in one at a time. And we're doing this so that it can, the pastry can absorb all of the eggs without us overworking it. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my third egg. As well as, like we talked about, you might not use all of your eggs. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in, this is the third egg. I'm gonna crank it up to medium. So 
always exciting when it starts to come together. Great. Just looking good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna lift my paddle, and I want you to see that it is, it is having, has some movement to it, but it's not exactly flowing easily off the paddle when I nudge it. So that's how I know that I need to go ahead and I need to add in that fourth egg to make sure that we're getting to that right consistency that we want. And it's important that we have the right amount of eggs because they are, as I mentioned before, they're our leavening agent and we need them in this recipe because there isn't any baking soda, there isn't any baking powder. And they're what is going to cause our pastry to have that nice rise to it. All right, here we go. Adding in that fourth egg. Sorry for the mixer noise, but baking in real time, <laughs> it's all a part of it. Great. I'm gonna go ahead and stop and I wanna show you that, see how we're starting to have that fluidity? See how it's falling off of my paddle? Gorgeous, that's exactly what we want. I'm gonna scrape down the sides a little bit here, and then I'm gonna take my paddle off, and I'm gonna show you a couple of different tricks that you can see if your pastry is done. I'm gonna swirl my paddle around, and I'm gonna pull it up. See how it forms that V shape at the bottom, and it's kind of flowing, like a little bit flowy here? That's what we want. That's the consistency that we're looking for. Also, if we zoom in here, kind of I can show you, I have a clean finger. I did wash my hands before I started. You can pull your finger through like that and see how it kind of creates a trough there and it doesn't immediately collapse in on itself. That's how I know that it's at the right thickness. It's not too thick, it's not too thin. And that's what you want. If your dough's too thin, you're gonna have a flat eclair. If it's too thick, then you're gonna have difficulty piping your eclair, which is gonna result in an uneven product. But that's it. That's the shoe pastry. It's not that intimidating after all, is it? I know you can do it. And if you wanna go ahead and take this delicious shoe pastry to the next level and make a delicious dessert, check out our website, bakeyglovebox.com and order our raspberry and chocolate eclairs where we give you step-by-step -step instructions to continue on with this recipe and make delicious eclairs. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. This video is going to post in just a few sh short moments after we end, and I would love for you to post questions and I will be sure to respond. Hope you have a great Saturday evening. I'll see you next time.